and welcome back to another video. Um, been a couple of weeks since I've done the video, but I was super excited to make this one. This one is a Kickstarter announcement, essentially, or a model showcase, or both, of my favorite game, and that's Broadside Empires of Steel. Um, I do have a battle report coming up that I just haven't had time to edit, but me and my wife played a really fun game of Broadside about a month and a half ago now, and we just haven't, uh, we recorded it, we had a great time, but we never got around to editing it. Now, if you're wondering what this shadow is here, that is Admiral Jellico. Hi, Jellico. That is our newest addition to the shaky cam. So, the original beast is underneath the table here, but anyway... What I'm here to show you guys off today is some samplers of the newest Kickstarter, which I believe starts tomorrow, or by the time you probably watch this, it's probably out today. And that is the, I believe, the fourth Kickstarter. Uh, fourth, man, is it four or five? I think it's four. Um, and that shows off, uh, I guess, mainly the Japanese. So I am here to show you what I have managed to print off from the Japanese that the, the boys at Broadside kindly sent me. Uh, so thanks very much for that. And I just wanted to give you uh, an idea of what you're in store for. Now, this is the rule book here. I have it all separated here into a nice book that my wife bind or bound for me. But we're not here to look at the book. So I'm just going to take this aside and I'm going to show you off some of the models. Now, I'm going to start off probably with the, the destroyers. We'll start off with the torpedo boat. Now, can you see that? It's tiny. I don't have the bases for them right now, but maybe I can zoom in here and we can take a better look. Oh, Jellico, get out of here, you. No. I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to pause this video and be right back. Apparently, the British Admiralty does not like this. All right, we're back after that um, British naval attack. And this is a... It's very small, and I don't have it on the base right now, but you can see it is a essentially a torpedo boat and this is the Harasume and if I can just bring it up here maybe a little bit closer to the camera you can get a better look at the details of it really unique old school destroyer with the gun barely any place for the captain to stand it's mainly just a boat to carry torpedoes and you see it has a couple along the side there so that is the Harasume or Harusume or Harusame I'm going to butcher that. But anyway, the next one I think is the Kaba. And that is, I'll bring it in here for size. That is quite a bit more modern by World War I standards. And looks more like a traditional destroyer, I think, or torpedo boat. Forget the uh, finger hair there. Great detail on these things. Now, once they're based, you'll see they're, they'll be a little better to, to look at. And I am terrible at the camera, but it'll get better. The camera work will get better as the ships get bigger because the destroyers are little tiny things. Now this is the bigger one. This is the Isokaze. And you can see compared to the other two, it kind of looks like a uh, kind of looks like a light cruiser. It's got uh, dual triple dual tor um, torpedo tubes along with several uh, several light guns. And it is the biggest of what I have, at least, Japanese destroyer for the World War One broadside game. Now, I don't, again, I don't have the, what you would call, uh, these little bases, I guess. So I can't show you it in any better detail than this. I also don't have the weapon stats of these yet. I think they're still working on those. So I don't have the cards to show you what they do. I'm just primarily showing you off the models. Now, if I sound a little weird or I'm overly out of breath, it's because my family has come down with the dreaded coronavirus. Uh, my son had it basically for the last two weeks, and I think it's my turn. I went to work today, and I just couldn't do it. I had to come home, so I'm not feeling the best, but I wanted to get this video out before the Kickstarter went live. I think I'm a little bit late, but hey, it is what it is. So there's the three destroyers. Let's move on to... Light cruisers. Now, I, the name of this, this is one of the coolest looking light cruisers. Huh. And this is the Tone, I believe. The Tone? Tone? 
But anyway, it is a very distinctive looking light cruiser. Very World War One-ish or early World War One. Comparatively small compared to some of the British light cruisers. Or, I guess, compact. And it's mainly a little gun gunboat. It's probably, what, four inches, five inches maybe. And it's littered all around. And you can see, if I can just get the camera to focus, you can see all the detail they have managed to cram into this thing. Now, my paint jobs, obviously, please, please, let's be realistic here. My paint jobs are pretty shit. Um, and there are better out there in the world, but I try and at least get them on the table to look like they are playable. If I bring the the what the isokaze in here, you can see the isokaze is almost as long as it and almost as wide. So well, high definition cat hair, thanks Jellico. Um, yeah, that's the tone or tone, I'm butchering it as usual. The next is another light cruiser, and this is the hmm, what does it call? This is the Chikuma, the Ch the Chikuma. So if I show you the Tone next to it, now these are very um, recognizable names from the World War II in the Pacific, the Tone and the Chikuma, but in World War I they're a little less well known. So here is the Tone, we'll just keep them off to the side, and this is the Chikuma. You'll see it's just, it's just so much longer than the Tone, it's got obviously more funnels, much larger ship, but really nice. They've crammed so much into this ship keep them there right beside that and i think we'll move on to the armored cruiser this is the asama now i trying not to say bin laden after that because i'm <laughs> i was uh anyway i can't say the word asama without thinking bin laden so i'm very sorry i'm not trying not to laugh there's nothing funny about it but um my brain just for some reason it's programmed into my brain from the news but anyway here is the Asama and it is a beautiful model like now when you start getting into the bigger ships with the more you know with the with a little wider they can get into a lot more detail you can see it's carrying turrets now or well, um, larger turrets and it really is you see the tor torpedo netting along the side there really really nice and you know if i get them in focus here let me just zoom out a little bit you get them in focus here you can see you're starting to get into the real the real ships starting off at the small one making your way through the light cruisers into the heavy cruiser um yeah so we're at the heavy cruisers let's just get these little ones out of the way we'll zoom back in boop, boop. oh wait that's out in we go Zoom back in, we'll put him off to the side there so he's still in frame, and we will get the, now what is this one? This is the Ibuki, the I Ibuki. Now I can't tell if this is a Dreadnought or a Heavy Cruiser, I don't know a lot about it. I think it's a Dreadnought or a, a pre-Dreadnought. This is the Ibuki, you can see if I bring them Osama back in there. A little bigger again, we're getting into the main capital ships now. This is the Ibuki, oh, whoops, sorry. Really nice. It's got uh, some main guns, probably 12 inches, 11 inches maybe, and some maybe 8 inches or 6 inches in turrets there. Again, I'm not hugely familiar with the Japanese side of World War One, but this is going to get me into that for sure. It's got some really nice crow's nests up here. And again, my paint job doesn't do the model justice, but it's a really nice ship. Now, here's a ship I know well, not because I know of it, but this is one of the first ships you you get to use in the game World of Warships um, when you're doing the Japanese battleship tree, which is my favorite tree. So this is one of the first one. This is the Kawachi. I think I'm saying that correctly, the Kawachi. So here you go, this is it. Really nice. Lots of detail. They've really crammed a lot of detail into these ships. And I'll go into it a little bit more. We'll show it next to the, we already did this, we already, I think I already did this, but we'll show it again. Next to the Ibuki. We're getting into big ones now. And then this is the final one that I have, and this is the Fuso. 
And this ship is just full. Let me just zoom out here. We get this is just full of guns. Now it's got the World War One um, bridge section there. It's not the the was that um, I think I was trying to call it uh, the Kubota, whatever those weird masts the Japanese use in the interwar period in World War Two. This is a more sleek World War One version of that, and it's got the um, six turrets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's got the six turrets there. Twelve guns. Really nice ship. Zoom back in just so I can get a better you can get a better look at it. And this is it next to the Kawachi. Now, a word about the three D printing because these are all three D printed by myself. I am I have printed off thousands of models. Uh, but that does not make me an expert. Believe me, I can barely for every for every two models that I get off, I I have to scrap three or four of them because they just I ruin them. I don't put the settings correctly. I put the supports in correctly. These ships, all of them. Let me actually I should probably zoom out again. All of these ships I printed on the same build plate. Now I have a, a Elego Saturn, the first generation one. So nothing. I mean I love it, but it's nothing special these days. I printed all of these plus a couple more on the same build plate. I'm actually missing one of the ships that uh, I, I dropped on the way down here and it broke <laughs> and I didn't want to show it off. Um, I printed them off all, all on the same build plate, plate, flat on the plate, no supports, no nothing. And they printed off excellent. There's a couple of errors, as in I one of the turrets here, one of the guns on the turrets of the, the Kawachi kind of cracked as I was pulling it off. It's um, off the plate now the turrets sorry i should let the turrets were supported i didn't print them off flat but the holes of the ship i did and they all came off perfect now if an idiot like me can do it the first time and i haven't used my machine in probably three months i just haven't had time and i was actually very nervous the resin that was in the tank um, was still in there from three months ago and i just carefully stirred it until i thought it was mixed together and i ran it and the room was cold, the window was open. Conditions were not favorable to a successful print, but I just wanted to see, and it printed off immaculate. I couldn't believe it, my mind was blown. So if I can do it, it just goes to tell you how well these ships are designed, that they can print off just like this. Um, with no errors. First time after months of not using the machine. Now, normally in, in especially I know myself I'm here for the big ships so I'll just take the little ships and move them aside and I just want to compare the Japanese the new Japanese coming out to some of the older designs now well, I say old but the other designs so we'll start we'll we'll use the the Fuso as the baseline here so here's the Japanese Fuso beautiful looking ship let's compare that to the German Lutzau you can see let me, let me zoom in again. You can see the Lutzau is longer. Looks a little sleeker, but I mean, it's probably a more modern ship, I would believe. I don't know a whole lot. The Lutzau was fairly new when World War I came out. I think it was, wasn't even commissioned. I think it was commissioned during World War I. But that's the Lutzau battlecruiser. Next to them, we'll try a Dreadnought. You can, so you can see a Dreadnought next to it. This is the Hegeland, or Helgoland. You can see uh, the turret layout there really favors the Fuso. We'll try Austro-Hungarian. This is the Tetegahuf, which surprisingly are very small ships. You can just see it just gets completely dwarfed in size, even though they have the same amount of barrels. But you can see it's pretty small next to an Austrian ship. We'll go with the Russian Dreadnought, fairly modernish one. Similar in power, and this is the Imperista Maria. So, there you go. There's the Fuso next to a Russian ship. We'll go to the Americans next. This is I now I took I chose this ship here. This is the Wyoming. I chose this because it has very similar amount of turrets, and just do want to show you the layout. You can see the American ship versus the Japanese ship there. Pretty cool. Love the American ships. This is the Italian ship, the Conte di Cavour. 
I think I'm saying that correctly. Probably not. Again, what's that? Uh, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 guns. Very similar in firepower. And then lastly, we'll go with the... We'll just show the lion next to it. Just so you have an idea how big the lion is. The lion, it really is a big cat. It's huge. Now, I'm not 100% sure if the lion sits this far above the waterline or not, or the fusil sits that low to the waterline. It they very well might be. I'm not, uh, you know, 100% on the weights of the ship or where they would sit, but, I mean, they look correct to me, at least to the eye, which is important. And then we'll do the British Agincourt just to show you another big gun ship from the British. Very similar firepower and a really nice ship and that just shows you what you're in store for here now i'm going to zoom out a little bit here and i'm going to bring them all in we'll get them out of the way let's get um some people might like this some people might not but i have <laughs> had to go to great lengths to make the different nations in this game have different well let me see here no one wants to see me do this on camera, especially with my big hairy hands in the way, but we're, I've committed now and I can't stop. So here is the, the Japanese ship. I've tried to make all the hulls, or the decking in the hulls, a slightly different color. Now that is purely an aesthetic choice made by myself. That has nothing, no basis in history, nothing. I just didn't want all the ships in the display case to all look the same. And I wanted people to ask if, if they've seen them, hey, what are these ones, what are those ones? I mean, you can tell probably by the nationality flag on the bases, but, I mean, some people won't. Um, and I really like doing it this way. Again, no bases in history, I have no idea. But you can see the Japanese ship, compared to all the other ships, it looks really sleek, really, really nice. I'm really happy with them, they look really good. And the Kickstarter is out, I think, today. So go check it out. I'll try and put the link in the description of this video if the link is available. So if it's not available, you got to do a bit of a Google search or I'll try and edit it. But this is the next nation in the Broadside Empire at Steel's or Empires of Steel game. A really fun game. Please check it out. I mean, you'd have to be a naval nut, um, I think, but... Even for casual players who don't like naval gaming and they have access to a 3D printer. I mean, it's just an amazing system. It's so easy to learn. It's fluid. There's not a, a ton of, of, um, of rules. And it's easy to digest and easy to teach. So there you go. The Japanese. Broadside. Empires of Steel. Kickstarter number four. Maybe five. Probably four. Anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry about my voice. Sorry about the cat. I'm going to go uh, have a cup of tea and try and rest for a bit because I feel like a sackish.